welcome Mark Blakeman to Parties Extra. I'm Helen Ford Wallace, and we are at the Oklahoma's Video Studio to talk about the new Performing Arts Center at Oklahoma State University. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Helen. For, well, we want to hear all about the new McKnight Center, so give us... So, the McKnight Center is still under construction. Oh. It's on campus at Oklahoma mm -hmm. State University in Stillwater. It'll be the newest performing arts center in the state of Oklahoma. We're uh, delighted to have just announced our inaugural season lineup last Saturday, and we've had an incredible response already. to that already. Mm -hmm. uh, very exciting to see uh, ticket orders pouring in and people interested in what it is that we uh, will be bringing to Oklahoma. Well, so it is a, the facility itself, the building, um, how many seats do you have in the main hall? So we have, we have three performance spaces. The large space, the mm -hmm. performance hall, has 1,100 seats. We have a dedicated recital hall, which is 200 seats. And then we have an outdoor plaza or green space um, where we'll be able to share performances that are happening indoors um, to the lawn area so that we can share those experiences How with more nice people. That so we've got a 32-foot LED wall out there in the plaza. Oh my. So what's a dedicated, what's that mean when you have a dedicated room? or a dedicated I, I just facility? mean that it's a purpose-built facility so these spaces have been designed specifically to, to create a performance space for certain types of activities. So the performance hall, the large room, technically is an opera house with a full orchestra pit mm -hmm. and fly loft so that you can fly sets in and out and theatrical uh, equipment. And the recital hall is really designed with superb acoustics for musical performances. And the building has incredible technology throughout it so that we can enhance the experience oh of all gosh. our concert goers. I mean, that's it is. fabulous. It is. It's fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I mean, lucky OSU. <laughs> it's, really, it's really wonderful, and uh, President Hargis is very much a strong advocate for the arts, and we're excited to see the McKnight Center be another piece in really enhancing um, the art and culture activities at OSU and really strengthening the brand of the university. And so you came in a couple of years ago to get all this set up. Mm -hmm. and and probably worked on some of the design for the building um, and set up the what's what's going to be performing there correct too. that's so right tell us a little bit about that so we have 25 performances scheduled in our inaugural season that take place in the two interior performance rooms and then we'll be sharing some of that content to the outdoor plaza we worked really hard to provide a variety of content we've really been focused on quality, not quantity, mm -hmm. and we're... 25 is a tw lot. 25 <laughs> doesn't sound like a lot to me, but it, it might to others, uh -huh. um, but really focused on quality and bringing world-class talent to Oklahoma State and the McKnight Center. We open in October of this year with a residency of the New York Philharmonic. Oh, that's very fabulous. So in addition to multiple performances, they'll also be the musicians of the orchestra will be teaching on campus. So that's a great opportunity for the music students at OSU to have these learning opportunities with world-class musicians. Uh, the Philharmonic's performances uh, feature an Oklahoma native and a, a, a colleague of mine, Kelly O'Hara, oh. uh, which some folks may know. Uh, she'll be singing um, That's on... That's big. It is. Mm -hmm. She'll be singing on two different concerts, and then the concert master of the Philharmonic, Frank Wong, will be playing a violin, a Sibelius Violin Concerto. Um, we have other great classical performers scheduled in the season, including um, another Oklahoman, Sarah Coburn, incredible uh, opera singer and OSU graduate who will be giving a recital. We have the Academy of St. Martin in the Fields, probably the most recorded orchestra in history. They're based in London, and the premier violin soloist of the world, Joshua Bell, is oh their my. artistic director, and mm -hmm. he'll be with them, and he'll be performing. And we have the incredible Andre Watts, a concert pianist, coming in. And we will bring back, uh, now and it'll be in its third iteration, but our Chamber Music Festival, under the artistic direction of Anne Marie McDermott, will uh, perform at the McKnight Center in our inaugural season. And that's kind of the classical programming. We have a small Broadway series uh, with different productions coming in. We start off with a 
holiday production, Rudolph. It's, it's based on the a stop motion television special from the 1960s. We have uh, An American in Paris, which is based on the 1951 film and features the music of George and Ira Gershwin. We have a, oh a musical about Buddy Holly, the Buddy Holly story. And we have another theatrical production called Cirque Mechanics, so we're bringing a Cirque Cirque show in. in. That's great. It's very exciting. We tried to provide as much variety as we could, um, and, you know, we're learning as we go, um, and we'll start to understand what the appetite is for different types of programs, and hopefully we'll be able to expand in the coming years. Oh, my gosh. That's, you've kind of hit it all right at the first year, I think. Uh, so the grand opening, will that will you have parties and carry on? We'll have lots of parties, mm -hmm. I'm sure. It'll be a great celebration. We're still working on um, plans around the opening. I'm sure that we will have uh, most likely a ribbon cutting ceremony and an open house where people in the community would be able to walk through the so, facility before yeah. we mm -hmm. before we give our first um, performance. I think that uh, all of the Philharmonics concerts will be a great celebration that weekend. And the other thing that I should mention is that um, the students of Oklahoma State University will be performing in the McKnight Center as their new home. So the university orchestra, wind ensemble, the choral programs will all have the benefit of performing on the same stage where all of these world-class artists How are performing. How wonderful is that? There, you can't beat that. It's very exciting. Mm -hmm. it, that is wonderful. So the you all and during that first week you have these master classes? That's right. What is that? So entail? master classes are where visiting artists would um, listen to a select group of student musicians might be two, three different musicians, spend a half an hour with them, coaching them on their playing, and we'll open these up to the public. So we might have a hundred people observing mm -hmm. this learning opportunity, um, but it is a great way for students to, to really hear from practicing artists um, that are bringing this wealth of expertise. And as we have approached all of our visiting artists in our first season, when we invite them to come perform at the McKnight Center, we ask them to teach as well. So our goal is not only to provide incredible performances to all who attend, but also to create these learning opportunities for the university students. Your students are very lucky. Very lucky to have that There's, opportunity. There are not a lot of places you can go <laughs> to learn from a musician of the New York Philharmonic. That is amazing. So how can we get tickets? So tickets are on sale now. Mm -hmm. um, we announced last Saturday, and you can go to our website, McKnightCenter.org, mm -hmm. and you can see our full season lineup. We're selling subscription packages right now, and you also can book, call our box office I at, wondered if there was at, a box office. 405-744-9999. Okay, and you all have been, um, you've done this, you've facilitated the Chamber Music Festival, That's right. I think, in Dallas and here. We've, I think. we've gone a lot of a lot of different communities. My strategy was to take world-class chamber musicians to other parts of the region to show people what it is that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And those musicians have been teaching when they've been on campus. We just finished our second annual festival last week and we had six concerts in six days in four different cities, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Stillwater, and Dallas. And it was glorious, it was fabulous. Um, we gave a performance for all of the fifth graders for Stillwater Public Schools. So we did a young people's concert that week and all of our visiting artists taught on campus as well. Wow, that's amazing. So what other productions do you have in mind? Well, um, we have started to put feelers out for our second season mm -hmm. and we're working on kind of our anchor per performances. We don't know what those will be yet, but we may have another notable orchestra open our season. We're looking at... Oh, that's a good idea. Always we're good looking idea. at um, other opportunities with touring Broadway shows and we're thinking as far out as year five currently because um, there are some world-class artists uh, such as Yo-Yo Ma or the, or the Berlin Philharmonic where you have to work that far in advance in order mm -hmm. to secure their appearance. So we're thinking much further down the road than most people might um, think that we would be, but mm -hmm. we're really focused Working on bringing those amazing world-class artists to so Stillwater. So are, are you year-round? Are you, or do you break for the summer? Our or? season will run typically from September through late April or early May. It mm -hmm. kind of, it'll run concurrent 
to the school year and most likely um, we, we may do a festival in the summer, we may become more of a learning uh, facility in the summer with summer camps and things like that, um, but we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. Right now we're just so overwhelmed with inquiries about um, tickets and subscriptions that we're, we're rushing to fill everybody's orders and meet everybody's needs. So we've got classical and we've got opera and we've got, uh, we've got, you've got a lot going we on. We have jazz in there, uh -huh. uh, Preservation Hall, jazz band from mm -hmm. New Orleans. And your background um, is from Nashville. Will we have some Nashville sound? Uh, <laughs> we're, we're working on that. The thing that's interesting is different genres of artists um, they confirm appearances with different lead times. So classical artists tend to confirm further out. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, when we're when we're talking to Yo-Yo or Berlin Philharmonic or Vienna or whoever it is, we're working many years out. Those highly sought-after popular artists tend to be the last ones to perform. But we've got a number of feelers out there already, and we anticipate that we may add one or two additional performances to our inaugural season lineup. That's kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. And you all also have um, Burns and Ann um, with their interest in New Mexico and the Dole Reed Center. Um, so I don't know. I, Do we have some? You know, the thing that's great about um, the art is that it's really it's prime for collaboration. It just connects, and it really is a great bridge. Mm -hmm. um, music, in particular, is a language that connects people without a word being spoken, and people from all backgrounds and nationalities can share an, ex an experience together and have this meaningful moment, um, even if there are language barriers. So. We're looking for opportunities to collaborate. We'll be, I believe, collaborating with the OSU Museum of Art, uh, for example, on some projects. And so the more we can find those collaborative projects, the more people I think that we can reach because we bring in more partners that way. You are, I know you're talking world class here, uh, but I, I personally think Burns Hargis can play the piano world class. Burns is a very, class. very talented <laughs> jazz pianist, that's right. Uh -huh. So I, I envisioned him up there playing. Eventually, with... <laughs> I'm sure that will happen. <laughs> okay, well anything else about the... Um, we're, we're just very delighted at the, the at the response. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd invite people to, to visit our website um, and see what we have to offer. You know, it's a very intimate environment with 1,100 seats. It's it's, tip, it's about half the size you would see normally in a performing arts center. So it's a very personal experience and we're gonna use technology in the building to enhance um, the, that experience by using uh, image magnification on LED walls inside the performance hall and things like that. So it's gonna be really we think we're gonna be able to offer something very unique. I think you are going to too. Yeah. So, well thanks again, Mark, for dropping by Thank to you. update your progress at the McKnight Center. This is truly a place for national and international programs featuring the performing arts, productions, and artists. Everyone will want to go to see this global stage. Thanks again.